Our scripture reading this morning is very familiar scripture. I'm sure you'll find it. From Matthew 5, 1 through 12. The Beatitudes. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be com comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So in this of the reading of God's holy word. So in our scripture for today, we find Jesus teaching the people. And this piece of scripture we're focusing on is the beginning of the Sermon of the, on the Mount. And at this time, when he is teaching them, he is telling the people about the blessings that God has for them. You see, we are promised blessings from God by Jesus. And now these blessings in this part of the scripture are often referred to as the Beatitudes. And when I was a kid, I always wondered, why would we be given B attitudes by Jesus? Why would I want to fly around and try to sting people? And why would Jesus want me to have that as my attitude? Now, obviously, I didn't quite hear my Sunday school teacher when they were talking to me, because these are the B attitudes, not the B's attitudes. Now, the word beatitude comes from the Latin word beatitudo, which means supreme blessedness. And when we look at the scripture, it is clear to see why we call them the Beatitudes. Because each one of them is a blessing that is promised to us. Now perhaps you have caught on to our sermon series that we've been working on the last few weeks. But if you have not, I'll go ahead and spoil the surprise for you. We are talking about the promises of God. In the first week, we talked about that God is faithful and that he keeps his promises. Last week we talked about being fishers of men. And when we talked about that, we were talking about the promise that God is going to give you purpose in your life. Now this week we're going to talk about the promise that God will give us blessings. We know that God keeps his promises. We know that he is faithful to his word. And we are told about the great blessings he is going to bestow upon us. Now, right now in the service would be the point where if I was going to preach to you the gospel of prosperity, I would ask you all to send me a check so that I can be blessed. And if you do, God is going to bless you as well financially. Well, brothers and sisters, that is not the case. I do not teach the gospel of prosperity. I believe that it is a tainting of all things holy. Do I believe that we should give to the church and to God freely? knowing that he will provide for us. Yes, I do. What I don't believe is that you need to send me your money, and by me, I mean the pastor, so that I can intercede with God for you, and that you can be blessed. See, the blessings of God are not bestowed upon you by the pastor. The blessings of God are bestowed upon you and given to you by him. See, there are people out there telling others that if they give them enough money, God is going to make sure they never face an obstacle in their life. 
that he will remove all barriers for them in their life and in their careers and at home. They will know nothing but goodness and wealth that they just give enough to the pastor. If you ever find yourself in a church where the leaders are telling you to give them all your money so that they can bless you, it is time for you to run. Because that is not a place where you're going to find anything good. Oh, you might make connections, and that might allow you to prosper, but the consequences of perverting the gospel of Jesus will be paid for in the next life. See, these pastors are telling people that righteousness is measured by how much money you have. That if you are rich, you are automatically righteous because God has blessed you with that. But when Jesus was giving this sermon, he was speaking out against people as well. See, he was speaking out against Pharisees during this time. They held on to the belief that righteousness was found only in how well you can obey the law. And it was done through outward acts only. Jesus turns that around with the Beatitudes, letting the people know that the internal workings of our hearts and our minds are so much more important than just following certain rules. Through this scripture, he also lets us know that God does not promise us a life that is free of strife, free of barriers, or free from all care. Indeed, what he tells us is that we will live lives full of all of these things. But there are blessings because of that. He tells us that that is part of the blessings, though, that there are difficulties. You see, if you, if you pay attention, the Beatitudes almost all start with something that we don't want in our lives. Or things in the wor- that this world will tell you that you shouldn't want to have in your lives. And what he is saying is, he is telling us that the world will reject you because of these things. But God will love you because of these things. So let's look at them today. And let's see what the world says about each one of these beginnings for us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, which means blessed are the humble. When was the last time the world told you that you should be humble? No, we don't look up to those that are humble. We look up to those that are loud and brash. Those consistently reminding us of how great they are. The ones that the world, those are the ones the world tells you you should look up to. I'm always reminded of the baseball player Ricky Henderson Maybe you, maybe you know who he was, maybe you don't. Um, he's a very, very good baseball player. But when Ricky Henderson talked about Ricky Henderson, Ricky Henderson did it that way. You see, Ricky Henderson would say that Ricky Henderson is the greatest stealer of all time. And that is always how he referred to himself. Not I, not me, Ricky Henderson. Making sure that you knew who he was. Blessed are those that are mourning. Why should we want to be in mourning? We shouldn't be sad. That's what the world tells you. You should always be happy. There should never be a time for you to mourn. If someone dies, we'll just get over it. If you lose a job, we'll just get another. The world tells you that the only way to move is forward, and you have to do so at all costs. Blessed are the gentle ones. There is nothing this world hates more than a gentle person. How can you let others treat you like that? You have to strike back. You can't allow them to get away with that. You have to fight. And if you aren't going to fight for yourself, how can you expect to get anywhere? Blessed are the ones that hunger for thirst and righteousness. Why do you care what happens to others as long as you're getting ahead? Who cares about those people that are being mistreated? because of the way they look or because of the way they think, they aren't the same as you. You should just let it go. Blessed are the merciful ones. There is no room in this world for mercy. It's dog eat dog, and if you want to get ahead, you have to be ruthless. Maybe you remember the movie The Karate Kid, the Cobra Kai Dojo, they were the bad guys, and their motto was this, strike first, strike hard, and no mercy. And that is what the world wants you to do. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
the world will tell you there is no one that is pure in heart. All of us are only in it for ourselves, and truly we all have black hearts, and that's a fact. Blessed are the peacemakers. What peace? There could be no peace in this world. Everyone, everywhere is always fighting. And if you try to make peace, either you're a dreamer, or clearly you're only doing so because it's going to benefit you in some way. Blessed are the ones that are persecuted because of their righteousness. The world wants you to abandon your beliefs at the first sign of trouble. Surely you don't think it's that important. And what do you mean you can be blessed by people speaking evil of you? You have to get up there and fight them, or at least you have to say something evil back to them. You see, each of the Beatitudes, there are things that we must suffer or deal with. And the world tells us that you should hate all of them or simply ignore them. Now the prosperity pastors will tell you that these things never need to be a part of your life because God will not allow them to be a part of your life if you just think positive and then send me that money. However, God knows that we will be put in each of these situations in our lives. And he knows that we will need the blessings that follow at some point. He knows that we will mourn. There is simply no way around the fact that we will lose loved ones in our lives. But God wants you to know that when you mourn, he will be there to comfort you. Not just anyone will be there, but God will be there. In the depths of your despair, he walks with you. God knows that we will have opportunities to live our lives in humble, gentle, merciful ways. To pursue righteousness and to make peace. And in each of these opportunities, he wants us to choose the right way. And he wants you to know that when we choose to live your life, our lives in the right way, that there are blessings waiting for us, including heaven, earth, satisfaction, mercy, and being called the Son of God. Each one of those is a tremendous blessing that is promised. And when you think about it, what more could you possibly want? Heaven, earth, satisfaction, mercy, and being called the Son of God. What else is there that you would need? We are told that we will likely face persecution for our faith and that we can expect blessings by enduring that persecution. For me, when I read that, it makes me think of it in these terms. If you are faithful to God through difficult times, especially when others are persecuting you because of your faith, God promises that he will be faithful to you. Now finally, I think that it is important for us to remember that these blessings do not come freely to us. See, these blessings were bought and paid for with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. See, he paid that price for us so that we can reap the blessings of heaven. The only cost to you is to accept him as your Savior and follow him. And if you haven't done so yet in your life, I encourage you to do so today. If you have any questions, I'd love to talk to you about it more. If today is the day you find it is time for you to commit your life to Christ, I would ask that you come forward today during our final song. If you happen to be watching a sermon online, give me a call at the parsonage or on my cell phone. We can talk about it then. But if you've already given your allegiance to Christ as your Savior, my challenge for you this week is this. Pick one, just one of the Beatitudes, and then do your best to live that out this week in your life. Be a peacemaker, be merciful, be humble. Whichever one you choose, do your best to live it out this week.